Back in 1986, we were just discovering that DNA was a, a molecular computer and that humans were, wow, pretty closely related to chimpanzees. Today I read in New Scientist that humans probably consist of around 350,000 genes and we've already mapped most, most of them. Even more amazing, humans may differ from mice by as little as 300 genes. When I first wrote After the Bomb, the idea of a mutant sentient dog was closer to fantasy than science fiction. Looking at it in 2001, it seems like we'll be talking to genetically modified canines in the not too distant future. Animals. Which takes me <clears throat> to a couple of comments on the animal section of this game book. Yes, I know that it is incomplete, but do you have any idea how many animals there are in the world? How many birds? We're talking about over 750 species in North America alone. So in this volume, volume I've pretty much concentrated on the creatures common to the eastern United States and Canada. And yes, that means I have not included most zoo animals. And yes, other source books do and will cover other animals. Do you have any arguments with the various animal descriptions and statistics? All I can say is welcome to the club. It's a rare day when any two expert sources agree on anything. Should players roll up or choose their animal? Whether players randomly roll their animal type or whether they get to choose the animal they'd like, it's entirely up to the game master. Still, here are a few good reasons to go with random character creation. One, random rolls equal good role playing. Excellent players can role play anything. An excellent player can play any character and sees a weak character as a challenge, not a liability. Two, random rolls equal something new and different. Even the best player falls into ruts. Random determinations may create something the gamer will love playing that he or she would never have tried if allowed to choose. Random rolls equal time saved. Another advantage of random character generation is the convenience that it provides to the game master. Instead of laborious constructing every new villain and NPC, the game master can just roll up the new encounters. This makes scenario design and quick response to player actions much easier. Random rolls equal realism. Finally, let's not forget that random rolls reflect real life. It comes down to the old adage, you can choose your friends, but you can't choose your parents. Even in the life, lives of fantasy characters, there may be no control over their origins. How to play a role-playing game. Role-playing games are really just an advanced form of regular board games. In fact, they are so advanced that they that they no longer use a board. Some of the elements are still the same. You still need paper, pencil, dice, and players. But the main thing you need to play you need to play a role-playing game is imagination. 